Hungary's Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, will serve as the European Union's president for the remainder of 2024 as part of the bloc's rotating six-month presidency rule. Mr. Orban, in his time as president, has traveled to Kyiv, Moscow, and Beijing with one of his goals to clear obstacles that are preventing the start of peace talks to end the war in Ukraine. This immediately put him in the proverbial European Union doghouse, as European Union and Commission leaders right away criticized Orban's use of the EU presidency to bring new attention to seeking a peace to end the Ukraine war. His troubles did not end there. He continues an ongoing dispute with the EU over Hungary's immigration policy and his country's reliance on Russian oil for Hungary's energy needs. The EU's ongoing disputes with Hungary and its Prime Minister have escalated to the point where they are willing to make life more difficult for Hungarian citizens by forcing Hungary's majority party to comply with Brussels rules. This behavior from EU leadership raises questions about how committed the EU is to the rule of law, as well as legal dissent from member states. The European Court of Justice, the top court of the EU, in June 2024, issued a 200 million euro fine, 216 million US dollars, and a daily 1 million euro, 1.1 million US dollars against Hungary for its non-compliance with the EU's asylum laws. This is an ongoing dispute with roots dating back to the 2015 migrant surge, which came primarily from North Africa and areas impacted by the Syrian civil war. This is the second time the court has ruled against Hungary on this issue. The first was in 2020. The EU implemented a lenient policy allowing asylum seekers to travel to Europe as a means of escaping conflicts or conditions resulting from them. Hungary, because it was on the EU's border, was to be considered a transit country, a location where migrants would come to submit their asylum claims. It is expected for them to remain in Hungary until the EU reviewed their claims and made a preliminary determination about their status, which would either force them to leave the EU or allow them to transit to other parts of the EU until the EU fully adjudicated their claims. The stay in Hungary policy did not sit well with Hungary, which built a wall and a supporting infrastructure to keep what it viewed as illegal entries out of Hungary and therefore the EU if they did not follow Hungary's immigration laws. Hungary's law required asylum seekers seeking entry into the country to make an asylum application at its embassies in non-EU countries on its border, which includes Serbia and Ukraine. Hungary will then decide for the applicants while they wait in a third country. Hungary argues that its borders, particularly those with non-EU countries, are its sovereign rights to maintain and defend, and that the EU cannot mandate how it chooses to manage its international borders. This is a legitimate argument, as Hungary is responsible for managing its affairs with non-EU neighbours when EU jurisdiction ends. Additionally, the EU does not maintain a military to protect its member country's borders, and Frontex does not have authority over the border unless the member country is no longer effective in controlling its border. This again reinforces that EU borders with non-EU countries are the sovereign rights of that particular country, and in this case, Hungary. The international border is a clear grey area when it comes to EU rules. While it is true that EU member countries relinquished many of their sovereign rights upon joining, one could argue that the EU possesses the authority to establish a block-wide immigration policy, and the criminal court is correct. However, the partner nation is responsible for managing the international border, where EU authority ends. The EU lacks the capacity and authority to defend an international border, as its borders require defence and control for both defence and migration flow. Since NATO and the EU are distinct political entities, it is not possible to use NATO resources to enforce EU policies or control a member country's border, such as Hungary, which is both an EU and a NATO country. The Criminal Court of Justice, being far from a neutral arbiter, ruled in favor of the EU against Hungary, which also left Hungary in a position where it is responsible for its international border, but only to the extent that Brussels wants Hungary to determine how to manage its international border. Currently, Mr. Orban's government is paying the daily fine and controlling its border. However, they have stated that they cannot continue to pay the fine indefinitely and may agree to the court's ruling. Instead of leaving asylum applicants in Hungary, they are considering transporting them to EU headquarters in Brussels, 
a move reminiscent of Texas Governor Greg Abbott. The ongoing dispute between Budapest and Brussels also revolves around the issue of Russian oil imports. When the Ukraine war broke out in February 2022, the EU made it a policy to have the bloc become independent of Russian oil and gas. The EU had to impose two conditions to implement this policy, one of which was to permit Hungary and Slovakia to continue receiving Russian oil. Last month, the EU decided to sanction Russian oil company Lukoil, which resulted in Ukraine blocking this Russian oil pipeline that transits Ukraine to Hungary and Slovakia. The Ukrainians admit they shut down the pipeline in compliance with the EU sanctions. Hungary has proposed to buy the oil before it enters Ukraine, allowing it to be identified as Hungarian oil rather than Russian Luke oil. This approach is similar to what other EU countries do when they purchase oil and gas from Russia. The EU's refusal to intervene and negotiate the issue, rather than directly rejecting this, has sparked suspicions that the EU is trying to compel Hungary and Slovakia to cease buying Russian oil, even though they have permission to do so. Hungary and Slovakia are two EU countries that still maintain relatively close ties to Russia when compared to the rest of the EU, and this has been a source of contention. That is why it is suspected that this is an attempt by the EU to tighten sanctions, despite its agreement with Hungary and Slovakia that are meant to not only punish Russia, but also its two member countries' populations to have them turn against their governments. Hungary has responded by accusing the EU leadership in Brussels of being responsible for this. It has declared that it will utilize its veto power to prevent the distribution of the 6.5 billion euro, 7 billion US dollars, European Peace Facility for Ukraine aid, and it will persist in doing so until the EU fulfills its agreement with the country. Ukraine remains unaffected by the blocking of this aid, as the fund's purpose is to reimburse EU countries for their donations to Ukraine. Slovakia, which is actually more dependent on Russian oil than Hungary, in response has stated that it would also block disbursement of this fund, but also requested Ukraine to allow the oil to flow from the pipeline. And it reminded Ukraine that Slovakia is a significant supplier of Ukrainian electricity. This is not insignificant, as the Russian air and missile campaign has focused much of its efforts on destroying Ukraine's infrastructure, leaving it dependent on countries like Slovakia to offset its energy deficits. Ukraine's government response is that this is largely an internal political issue between the EU and its member countries, as it states that the Lukoil pipeline shutoff has had no significant impact on the flow of Russian oil that travels on pipelines crossing over Ukraine territory. The EU has been largely silent on Hungary and Slovakia's new rhetoric over asylum and oil. The EU has enforced two major decisions impacting Hungary, despite there being significant issues with their rulings over the questions of control of an international border or ignoring its own ruling on Russian oil exceptions to make a political point against Prime Minister Orban. The EU's recent actions aim not to directly affect Hungary's leadership, but rather to lower the living standards of Hungarians and Slovakians, thereby fostering a political rift from the bottom up, as their directives from above have failed to bring about the desired transformation in Budapest. And Hungary has made a number of concerning decisions, including allowing Chinese police to patrol the country under the dubious guise of assisting Chinese tourists and accepting funds from China for the Belt and Road Initiative, which has drawn criticism. However, the EU leadership's decision to complicate the lives of ordinary citizens due to political disagreements reveals a level of authoritarianism that warrants scrutiny and challenge.